ready for the Word today. Amen. I'm pumped up and excited about this message. We finished up our series out of the book of Judges. We're going to be starting another series very shortly. Uh, I believe we're going to 1 Corinthians, and that is a powerful book. And we're going to just go verse by verse and exposit the Word of God. And uh, we are pumped about that. But but I wanted to bring a very special message today entitled, The Great Reset. I personally believe that we are closer to the coming of the Lord than we've ever been. Amen? How many of you are looking for the rapture of the church? I am looking for the rapture of the church. This morning I want to call our attention to some things that are happening within our culture and within our world that show us that we are rapidly moving toward what I am going to call today the Great Reset. Uh, While I did not get this message from the Internet, I did find a website that had already done a great deal of research. I want to thank uh, the Lord for evidencetobelieve.com. But uh, I'd be, but, but I just want to jump into the outline today, and uh, I've got really two parts to this message. The first part is the biblical aspect of the Great Reset, what the Bible says about the Great Reset, and then we're going to look secondly at what our culture is saying about the Great Reset. So number one, first of all, I'm talking about a great economic reset, all right? First of all, the Bible predicts an evil worldwide dictator that will reset the world's economy. Now, we know this dictator uh, as the Antichrist. He will come into power after the rapture of the church. Now, the rapture of the church is that event that will occur when Christ returns in the clouds. And every single believer, do I have any believers here today? You're trusting in Christ. Every believer, man and woman, grandpa, grandpa, boy and girl, that knows Jesus Christ is going to be snatched away and caught away to be with the Lord. Earth's headlines will literally read millions missing across the globe. The Scripture says this in 1 Thessalonians. It says, For the Lord Himself shall re, uh, shall re, uh, step out of heaven with the shout, with the voice of, an ar- of the archangel, the trumpet call of God, and, and the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain. Do I have anybody that's living out there? Come on. We who are alive and remain are going to be caught up to meet with the Lord in the clouds. And I believe that this message is going to prove to you both biblically and with current events that we are closer than ever before, not only to the rapture, but to the events that follow in the aftermath. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Revelation chapter 13. I'd like to read verses number 1. And two, we're going to read some verses that are written in what we call figurative and apocalyptic language. This particular verse refers to this world leader who we call the Antichrist. Now, we know that there are many Antichrists in the world, right? The Scripture tells us that in First or Second John. But we know that there is only one satanically inspired individual that is known as the beast. He's going to rise to world power as the final human dictator before the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ when Christ returns not just to the clouds as in the rapture, but will return all the way to planet Earth to set up His millennial kingdom where He will reign for 1,000 years. Come on, if you believe that Jesus is going to reign for 1,000 years, can we give Him a big hand of praise today? Now the authority, I mean the Antichrist or the beast, is going to have great power and authority. Let me read it for you. Revelation 13. It says this. Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast. Now remember, this is figurative apocalyptic language. A beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, horns and ten crowns. Everybody say the number ten. All right, ten. I want you to remember ten. All right. 
and on his head a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. Now this is an apocalyptic description of a world dictator who is going to rise to power. And the next scripture says this, that the dragon gave him His power, His throne, and great authority. And we know who the dragon is. Come on, somebody. The book of Revelation clearly identifies the dragon as Satan himself. And the Bible describes this beast as him, so we know that this is a person. He is described as a strange beast with seven heads. And how many crowns and and horns? Ten, all right? Everybody remember ten. Okay, what I want to do is I want to compare this verse just for a moment with what is found in the book of Daniel, okay? I'm laying a strong foundation for you to believe in the great reset, all right? It is interesting that if we go back to the book of Daniel, that God gave Daniel two different visions. God revealed to Daniel all of the coming world empires. Now, he didn't reveal the downfall and rising of every single nation, right? But only those empires with world reach. I'm going to start with the second vision that Daniel had. You can see it on the screen there in that second column, those ferocious looking beasts. His second vision was of a series of beasts and each beast represented a different world empire. And and, and so we had those artist view of, of those beasts on the screen today. And you know, many times we think of the governments Uh, of our world as being good. And at times, government can be good, right? We're to honor the government, respect the government, and pray for our president. Come on, somebody. But interestingly enough, God sees the governments of the world as beasts. And anyone who follows politics and knows world history should be able to recognize some of the things that governments have done that are truly beastly. Can you say amen? Daniel's first vision was that of a man. And you can see that on the far, I guess on your far left side there. A a man and various parts of his body represented various kingdoms that would come upon the earth. These two visions are two different ways of looking at the same thing. What we're seeing on the screen is prophecy in pictures that has largely been fulfilled and is now history. The first kingdom was the worldwide kingdom of Babylon. We remember the name Nebuchadnezzar. He reigned, uh, That kingdom was from 612 to 539 B.C. This kingdom is represented by the head of gold and a lion having the wings of an eagle. The second kingdom is the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians from 539 to 331 B.C. represented by the upper body of silver and a bear. The third kingdom is the kingdom of Alexander the Great. We've heard of him. Greece, right? 331 to 63 B.C. Represented by the belly and thighs made of bronze and a leopard with four wings and four heads. And the last kingdom is none other than the kingdom of Rome from 60, beginning in 63 B.C. All right. Now, the fourth kingdom is unlike the first one's in that it surfaces in two different phases. How many of you are following along with me very closely today? Amen? And I'm trying to teach you some Bible prophecy today. All right. Uh, The first phase of this kingdom is represented by the legs of iron and an unspecified beast with iron teeth and bronze claws. This was the fierce Roman Empire which dominated the then known world for hundreds of years and was in power during the time of Jesus' birth, his life, his death, and his resurrection. And it is important for us to note that the Roman Empire was never conquered, but it split in two, and and that the Roman Empire actually is what laid the foundation for Western civilization. It's even crazy how we have sayings about Rome that people say all the time. Let me say a couple of them. All roads lead to Rome. How many of you have ever heard that? When in Rome, what do you do? You do as the Romans. So much of our world is touched 
by Rome. Our own government has senators like Rome. Some of our government buildings have architecture that is modeled after ancient Rome with pillars and arches. When you walk into an oval coliseum with tiered seating, that is duplicating the famous coliseum at Rome. Roads were first built across countries by the Romans. Even the very language that I'm speaking today, the language of English, is based on many Latin words that come from Rome, all right? I'm trying to say all of this to get you to see that and understand that the influence of Rome is still present in our world. And then the final phase of the last kingdom is what we call in Bible prophecy a revised Roman Empire. I want to also call it the New World Order, which will come on the world scene in the days leading up to the end times, all right? And this is where the number 10 becomes incredibly important. It is described in Daniel's vision as feet and toes that are a mixture of iron and clay. It is described as well as ten horns or ten kings uh, in, in, in Daniel chapter 7. And then we see it again, the number 10, in just in the passage that we read in Revelation chapter 13. All right? And so for thousands of years, our world has been made up of individual nations. But I want you to hear me today. One day, this has not happened yet, but one day, a group of ten world leaders, more than likely representing conglomerations of nations, will stand behind the Antichrist, and along with the dragon, they will give him their great authority. Come on, somebody. This is what the Bible prophesies. You say, I want to know where we're at in history. I want to know where we're at in Bible prophecy. We are just before those toes become into existence, all right? Now, what you have to understand at the end of Daniel's uh, vision that he had, that there was a great boulder that came out of heaven and crushed the empires of men, and it became a mountain, and it filled all the earth. This is what worried Nebuchadnezzar so bad about the dream that he had. And let me tell you what that is. That rock is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. I'm just here today to tell you that one day Jesus Christ will come out of heaven. He will destroy every kingdom of man and he will set up a kingdom on this earth and his glory and his honor and his worship will flood this earth for one day thousand years. Come on. If you're a believer who believes that this Bible is the inspired, inerrant, infallible Word of God, it is very important and necessary that you and I understand that God is the God of history, all right? History actually is his story. Come on now. He is the God of today. He's the God of the past. And He's the God of the future. And God has accurately predicted everything that has happened and will happen. And I went over all of that so that you can see that there's a God who's in control. Now, if God is in control, should we be afraid? Amen. If God is in control, should we panic and live a stressed out life? Absolutely not. But Pastor Bob, I watch the news. I'm concerned about our world. So am I. But let me tell you something. Every time you see something on the news that tells you that Jesus is coming, amen, lift up your head. It's getting close. Come on. I said lift up your head. Your redemption is drawing nigh. All of that being said, I believe that after the rapture of the church, the Antichrist will come to power. Those ten toes that represent ten world leaders or conglomerations of federations of nations will give him his power. And then something else is going to happen that I want to call today the Great Reset. We introduce another figure for you today. He's the Antichrist right-hand man. He's called the false prophet. 
And this is talking about him right here in Revelation 13, 16 to 18. It says this, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand and on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Many of you are familiar with these verses, right? Once the rapture takes place, once the Antichrist takes over, he, through this person known as the false prophet, will enact strict economic rules. He is going to reset the economy. In order to participate at any level in the economic system, to work, to buy, or to sell, uh, you're going to have to take a mark on your hand or on your forehead. And that word mark, by the way, is best understood as a physical, visible mark that can be seen. And this is what I want to call the Great Reset. Nothing like this has ever happened so far in the history of the world. But I want to assure you on the authority of the Word of God that it will happen. Now, those who take the mark are actually damning their souls to an eternity separated from God because they will not only take the mark, but worship the Antichrist himself. So how many of you are with are with me today. That's this sovereign God of the universe predicted all of this in Daniel's day, and he gave us more insight in John's day, and this is what I'm saying today. I'm repeating, I know, but the Bible predicts an evil world leader who will arise and actually hit the great reset button on the on the economy, his name is the Antichrist. How many of you understand that? Wave at me if you understand what the Word of God says today. Okay, now here's the bigger question today. What can we see in our culture today that is moving us toward that day? Some of you that may be new or may not realize that I am a big st student of Bible prophecy. I love Bible prophecy. Number two, history and current events all show we are moving toward the Great Reset. I'm going to give you several areas this morning that show how culturally our world is moving toward the moment when the mark of the beast is going to be instituted and the economy is reset. Here is what I have seen happening in our world. First of all, there has been a strong move toward globalism across the last 100 plus years. In order for the Antichrist to rise to power, the mindset of the world uh, will need to be changed uh, to be that the nations have lost their significance and that the world needs to be under a one world government. Any political leader that is not a nationalist, that is a nationalist and not a globalist, is going to be very suspect and basically, I believe, stands in the way of a satanically inspired agenda. Most of you have probably heard a term that has been spoken many times in the last 100 years. It is the term New World Order. How many of you have heard that term? Raise your hand. Amen. You've heard that term. The New World Order, in my mind, is the way that the spirit of the Antichrist is describing what will one day be the Antichrist kingdom. Now, let me just give you the rundown of how we are progressing toward a New World Order, that New World Order will will ultimately be a global dictatorship run by the Antichrist. Let's go all the way back to 1913. In 1913, the Federal Reserve, and by the way, my understanding is neither federal nor a reserve is created. It was planned on in 1910 on Jekyll Island, Georgia, by a group of bankers and politicians. This transferred the power to create money from the American government to a private group of bankers. 
July 28th, 1914, World War I. How many of you have heard of that? It's triggered by the assassination of Archduke Francis Ferdinand of Austria. May 27th, 1916, the League of Nations is proposed in a speech before the League to enforce peace. 1939, a book entitled, believe it or not, New World Order was written by H.G. Wells, and it proposes a collectivist one world state or new world order comprised of socialist democracies, and he declares that nationalist individualism is the world's disease. October 24th, 1945, the United Nations Charter becomes effective. Amen. Also on October 24th, Senator Glenn Taylor of Idaho introduces Senate Resolution 183, calling upon the U.S. Senate to go on record as favoring creation of a world republic, including an international Police force. September 11th, 1990. We're getting to where now some of us are alive. All right. Are you still with me? President Bush calls the Gulf War an opportunity for the New World Order. In an address to Congress entitled Toward a New World Order, Mr. Bush says the crisis in the Persian Gulf offers a rare opportunity to move toward a historic period of cooperation. Out of these troubled times, a new world order can emerge in which the nations of the world, east and west, north and south, can prosper and live in harmony. The, today, the new world is struggling to be born End quote. December 2019, COVID-19. How many of you remember that? COVID-19 begins to spread across the world, emanating from Wuhan, China. The media jumps on the epidemic and panic, panic and fear begins to spread. Governments all around the world lock down, confer, confining residents to their home and creating a global economic crisis. While the coronavirus, unfortunately, did succeed in killing thousands upon thousands. Millions are thrown out of work. Suicides have rocketed and demonstrations have spread around the world. Now let me introduce you to you to someone who to, for me is a pretty new player on the scene. Actually, this group called the World Economic Forum has been meeting since 1971. Uh, the new player is called the World Economic Forum. Uh, this is a group of about 2,500, are you with me, uh, political and business leaders that uh, have been meeting every single year. These are the most powerful and influential people in the world. I want you to pop, stop for a minute and think about this. How many of you understand that money plus influence equals power. Let me say it again. Money plus influence equals power. And this powerful group of people have a stated globalist agenda. Many of these people have never been elected to power by anyone, and a lot of people think that it's just a very harmless thing. It's just another group of business people getting together. I personally do not think so. At a conference in June of 2020 in Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum released its proposal and plan for what they call a Great Reset. Does that sound familiar? I've just produced to you evidence from the Scripture that the Antichrist is going to produce an economic reset. And now we have 2,500 people that are meeting every year and they're pushing towards a great reset. The mastermind of, of this is a man by the name of Klaus Schwab. You say, well, Pastor, what is the great reset? Simply put, it's a growing movement backed by many of the world's most powerful business leaders, government officials, and activists that aims to push the reset button on the global economy. 
It would destroy the current capitalist system and replace it with progressive and modernist socialist system. How, how many of you have actually heard of the Great Reset? I just am curious at how many of you actually have heard that. How many of you have heard of the World Economic Forum? Wave at me if you've heard of the World Economic Forum. Amen. Amen. Uh, how many of you have heard of this? You'll own nothing and be happy. They put that out all over everywhere. You'll own nothing and be happy. Uh, church, I am not talking about something that's been done in a back room. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is a well-documented movement among many of the world's most powerful people. Fundamentally, they are working towards a radical and complete transformation of everything that we do in our society. And this movement is being forced upon the nations and peoples of the world, whether they like it or not. President Biden has adopted, believe it or not, one of their slogans, actually. You probably heard him say, build back better. I'm not picking on President Biden today. Uh, the Pope, I am picking on him. The Pope of the Catholic Church has endorsed this tagline and says he also supports it. The newly crowned King Charles. How many of you have seen him on the news recently? He's one of their spokesmen. Bill Gates, one of the most world's elites and many of the world's elites and global corporations are behind this, pushing for a new world order. I want you to hear me today, church. I'm preaching the truth. I'm preaching the Word of God. They are pushing for that fourth ultimate kingdom feet of the beast uh, where the nations partly strong as iron unite with others as weak as clay where a group of ten come forward and they empower along with the dragon himself, Satan himself, that one called the Antichrist. Now, here's what Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau uh, spoke to the United Nations in September of 2020. I don't know if you realize this, but this man has not been kind to the churches of Canada. He's not been kind. This is what he says. This pandemic, speaking of the COVID-19, has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like extreme poverty, inequality, and climate change. Now let me just back up for a minute. The COVID-19 crisis was a world crisis. Amen? It wasn't it. It was. It was a dangerous thing. It was. I'm not dismissing that. But it has not been the crisis that Trudeau and the World Economic Forum needed to push through their agenda. All right. Uh, in fact, in, in you know, in, in, in June of 2020, they announced this whole idea of a great reset. That was a couple of years ago, and not much has really come out of it. And so you might be thinking, well, what's the big deal? <laughs> Listen. Just because it didn't happen then doesn't mean that these people aren't working behind the scenes. And furthermore, that the spirit of the Antichrist, come on somebody, is not at work in the world today. Bush used the Gulf War crisis to push a new world order. Trudeau used the COVID-19 crisis. I personally believe that the crisis that they will use to assist the Antichrist in the Great Reset will be the aftermath of a powerful and a sovereign move of Almighty God. And that move is called the rapture of the church. Come on, somebody. The world will be left behind in utter 
chaos. And that is once again when they will step in with this agenda and they will push the reset button. And if you read the brochure of the World Economic Forum, and I've been on their website, it sounds like a wonderful, wonderful organization. But I I don't know about you, but I'm not the kind of person that drinks all the Kool-Aid. Come on. Never questioning the motives behind it. The Bible tells us that Satan will appear as an angel of light. Let me give you just a couple of things that the World Economic Forum is about that the Antichrist system will definitely use. Secondly, there is a growing trend of governments and corporations to surveil you. Am I right? How many remember this? The National Security Agency spying on American whistleblowers, bringing that up into the news in about 2005. The U.S. government, with assistance from major telecommunication carriers, including AT&T, engaged in a massive, actually illegal dragnet surveillance of the domestic communications and communication records of millions of ordinary Americans at least uh, since 2001. All those documents were published in 2013 uh, by the media confirmed that the NSA obtains full copies of everything that is carried along major domestic fiber optics uh, cable networks. In June 2013, the media led by The Guardian and The Washington Post stated, started publishing a series of, a series of articles along with full government documents that have reported that much of what was reported in 2005 and 2006 was going on. Uh, and they do that as a result of what's called the Patriot Act. And some of you may be thinking, well, Pastor Bob, they don't do that anymore. Who are you trying to kid? Come on now. Who were you trying to kid? In fact, I'm going to tell you something. Your telephone is listening to me preach right now. How many of you believe that? The telephones are listening to what I have to say uh, right now. You carry a spy with you in your pocket. A A couple of years ago, people started realizing this was happening. You're being surveilled by Apple and by Facebook and by many other apps that you have on your phone. And China is the absolute leader in this realm. Their government literally knows everything about every citizen because in China there is facial recognition software everywhere and they track cell phones and they can show the location. And let me tell you something, our government can do that too. They can know who exactly is in the room of you with you because their cell phone is with them and their GPS is on. Come on, somebody. And this is something that the World Economic Forum is working on. They're working on a new form of ID. A new form of ID. The brightest, most brilliant minds in the world today are working on a new form of ID. It's going to be digital ID. Every time you get on a train, buy gasoline for your car or a plane ticket, you will use that ID. It will be linked to your health records. It will be linked to your finances. And here is the point. Where will you carry this ID? You will carry it in your body, all right? The World Economic Forum calls this the fourth industrial revolution. It is a fusion of our physical, digital, and biological identities. Some people have put it like this. We are now entering the era of the internet of our bodies, and there are numerous types of technology that are being looked at from RFID chips to other devices that will be implanted, swallowed, or worn on our bodies. And many people are saying, well, Pastor Bob, is that the mark 
of the beast. Uh, Let me tell you what I think. I think that the mark of the beast is going to be a physical, visible mark on someone's body, but it's also going to be used in sub- it, 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 right alongside some type of biometric device associated with that person's body. I want you to hear me. It's going to happen. And this is exactly how the Antichrist is going to be able to control the world population. You are being surveilled. Some corporation knows exactly what you have looked at on your phone, on your television, where you go, and even if they wanted to, they could figure out who's been in the room with you. I'm just here today to tell you that Jesus is coming and everything is being set up for the mark of the beast. Let me give you another thing that I see happening in our culture. There are changes in finance that are coming to our world. In order for the Antichrist to completely control the world's finances, we need to move to a completely cashless society. If you've been around this church for a number of years, you've heard me teach on that. Uh, cashless society and the move toward that. It's a very, very powerful sign of the time because you see, if there is cash, you can have a black market. You can't control what everybody buys and sells as long as there is cash, right? And now everybody's heard of cryptocurrency. You've heard of that? Wave at me. You've heard of Bitcoin, right? And things like that. Well, the government of the world wants to get in on that. So governments around the world are investing in what is known as CBDCs, Central Bank Digital Currencies. And by the way, this includes our government. On March 9th, 2022, you can look this up, President Joe Biden signed an executive order encouraging the Fed to continue with its CBDC efforts without delay, placing, and I'm in quotes now, placing the highest urgency on research and development for the design and deployment of an American CBDC, a digital currency linked to the central bank. And, of course, they've got potential benefits to all of that. They can tell you many, many reasons why it's a good idea. Uh, But at, at this time, I want you to hear me. Where are we at? Only 10 nations have fully launched the CBDC. Although, are you hearing me? 105 countries representing more than 95% of the global domestic product are seeking to do the same, according to the CBDC tracker run by the Atlantic Council, a Washington-based think tank for international affairs and global economics. The first country uh, to launch the CBDC was Bahamas. With the sand dollar, that's what they call it, in October 2020. Jamaica was followed in May of 2020. Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, launched the CBDC in 2021. Along with India, South Korea, Japan, and Russia working on CBDCs, all in the development or pilot uh, stages. Undoubtedly, the Antichrist is going to need uh, a move toward a cashless society. And have you noticed the little signs that say, I'm sorry, we have a coin shortage who's noticed those little signs? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, have you noticed uh, when you make a deposit at the bank, at least when we do for the church, uh, what happens is they mark down how much cash is coming in every single time. They want to know. They keep special attention on that today. I'm just here today to tell you, church, that if you'll open up your eyes, we can see biblical prophecy being done right before our very eyes. This is the Antichrist system being designed right in our world today. We just say, Pastor, what do I need to do? First of all, let me tell you what, we've got to be prepared. Come on. We've got to be prepared. Now, there are many people who take this type of information and uh, they're moving to small little farms and prepping for the end of days. They're buying stockpiles of weapons and bullets and, and armory and and, 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 and 
and they're getting ready to, you know, grow their own food and have their own water source and all of this. But let me tell you something. I've read the whole Bible. It does not tell me to do that. Come on, somebody. But let me tell you something. There is something that we need to do. Every person who ever listens to this message on either Facebook or later on on YouTube, let me tell you something. You need a great reset in your life. Hello. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need a great reset. You need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And He needs to take everything that was old and He can make it new. And He can make you a brand new creature. Come on. Are you born again. Let me give you three things real quickly before I close today. First of all, you've got to make sure that you're right with God. Come on. Amen. The scripture says, but as many as received him, to them gave you the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name. Let me tell you something. I believe that there's salvation in only one and his name is Jesus. Come on. Number two, we've got to get rid of all sin in our lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not a time to be toying with sin. It's not a moment to be halfway in. It's not a moment to be lukewarm. This is what God wants. He wants for us to be red hot for Jesus Christ. Hello. He wants us praying. He wants us witnessing. He wants us on the front lines of the battle. And 1 John 3, 3 tells us this, and everyone who has this hope in Him. Do you have the hope that Jesus is coming? Do you have the hope of heaven? Do you have the hope of eternal life? Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies Himself even as He is pure. Scripture says, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord will come. Somebody may be thinking, well, Pastor, it could be 20 years or 50 years or 100 years. You know it certainly could. But let me tell you something, I'm going to live my life like it's going to be tomorrow or today. Come on. And then we need to tell as many as possible the good news of what's going on. I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm out there, in the world, I share by faith. Amen? I don't care if they are drunk. I don't care if they do look crazy. Amen? I'm talking to lots of people about Christ because I want them to know that He's the one true way. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to invite our musicians to come. Thank you for just letting me go a little bit longer today. I apologize for that. Amen. But I think that was a very important message. I really couldn't cut it down into two parts. But I wanted to bring us up to date as to where the world is. Where the world is. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper.